guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, today I'm going to talk more about, I guess you'd say the end of the traditional relationship. You know, I, at this point, I, I, I think guys are checking out guys that are having success with women never want to settle for one. Women are all over the place when it comes to dating and they, they, they're cheering on being, not being able to settle on one particular guy. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get into it. There's a new story that's come out that basically states that, uh, there, there's a lot of belief that women now are, are cheating more than men. Um, that they just, there's no, there's no being happy without the ability to, to have multiple partners and sleep with multiple people and, and uh, settling for one guy is somehow, you know, losing. There's articles coming out that are slamming just being a traditional housewife or a traditional woman, um, that, that there's no turning back at this point. So I got a new story from us uh, here that is a power trip why more women than ever are cheating on their husbands. This just came out last week. Uh, before I jump into that, a quick reminder, I'm gonna have Coach Red Pill. Uh, he had about 300 and some odd thousand subs here on uh, YouTube before uh, he, he was, uh, I guess, removed or excommunicated from YouTube. Um, but anyway, uh, Coach, uh, his name's Gonzo, uh, Gonzalo Lira. Um, he's, I believe, uh, from Latin America, uh, somewhere, Brazil maybe. I'm not sure where he's originally from. But he, anyway, he's been living in Ukraine, um, and he's been up there for the entire conflict. Uh, he's seen everything that's going on in the streets. Uh, the left likes to call him a Putin apologist. Um, but if, uh, if you're outside of the kind of the mainstream narrative uh, and want to know a little bit more information about what's going on and, and maybe get a little bit of an insider's view, um, I'm going to have him on this Saturday, uh, March 18th at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can join. It's going to be locals exclusive for the live interview, and then I may snip it up and put it over here on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Again, you can sign up. Um, the link will may take you to a support page, but you can just become a member, put in your email, and you you will be able to see it for free. Um, I, I I hope you guys join me for that. I think it's going to be a really interesting interview. Also, I'm I'm putting up more and more on Rumble. Uh, this is a video that's sitting here on YouTube, waiting for monetization because they demonetized it as soon as I uploaded it and turned it on. And so I turned it off and now it's sitting there and they have up to seven days uh, to, to review these videos for YouTube. I'm not gonna post any demonetized videos here anymore. I'm not giving YouTube the free views. So uh, anything that doesn't make it up here on YouTube, they not only allow on Rumble, but they monetize it. And um, so there's content like this video that you see here that is just not gonna probably be on YouTube. So be mindful of that. So from the New York Post, a power trip, why more women than ever are cheating on their husbands. Um, we know this is happening. Yes, guys cheat too. It's not a one-way street. But it's happening now because women cannot, they're just not happy settling for one dude. Either they got to chase the butterflies, they need the excitement, they they need the opportunity. They, they, they just feel like they're better than just one man. Uh, this story is uh, uh, written by, let's see, I think it's a Raquel Lanieri. She says, Nikki has been married for 15 years and she's been cheating on her husband for 12 of them. That means she went three years without cheating on him. This mother of two, let's hope that they're the husbands, who is in her late 30s, keeps track of her potential paramours via spreadsheet, has an untraceable Google voice number for communicating with his suitors, with her suitors and arranges rendezvous through WhatsApp. She generally juggles multiple partners at the same time and once had a, an affair with four different men on the same day. Uh, sure, one of these four hookups lasted all of 20 minutes, but she didn't care. She didn't want to be cuddled. Uh, I'm just going to put a, a pin in that for a second. Listen, if you're the husband and you have two kids and you don't know any, any of this is happening, what are the odds that, you know, she's being smart about this and making sure that when she was trying to get, you know, pregnant, that, she, that the husband was the only one she was with or that she didn't, uh, you know, forget to use protection or something or other uh, during the other hookups. Not good odds. On top of that, imagine her being with four different dudes and then that night going home to her husband who has no clue any of this is happening. 
look, affairs are bad across the board. No lies about it. But when you're, when you're having body counts like this on the sly, this takes it into a whole different realm. Uh, somehow worse, uh, I guess you could say. Because at this point, it's not even that she loves or cares for these other guys. She just wants a ton of strange. She said afterwards, she showered, took a work meeting, went on a dinner date, and had fun with another man. So I guess that's, is that four or five guys? She, her verdict, it was amazing. Of course, that's her verdict. Let's now, now let's let's hear how the husband felt about it, shall we? No, of course not. Uh, it was so cool, she says, because I got to really be in the driver's seat and get exactly what I wanted, and I just happened to feel uh, sexually greedy that day. Uh, Nikki, not a real name, reveals in a new iHeart Radio podcast uh, titled "She Wants More," hosted by author Joe Piazza. It's such a power trip to be able to command the sexual presence of people you desire and have them fulfill whatever you want or whatever it is you need, Nikki tells Piazza. It's crazy. Now, this is not the woman that had the affair. This is the, I guess this is Joe Piazza that does the podcast. But but what do you hear? What do you hear in the language that she uses? She's in the driver's seat. She wanted to be greedy. Um, it's a power trip. Uh, it, it, be able to command the presence of the people you desire and have them fill whatever her needs were. You notice all of this is centered about, around selfishness. And that so not only is she getting all this fun, all this action on the side, but she also still has the love, the support of a husband. She has her family. She has her home. This guy's probably busting his, uh, busting his tail at, at work to make sure he provides for the family. And all he asks for is, is a wife that will give him children, not some other dude's children, and to be faithful and to, to be a loving mother. But, but she's found that it's worth the risk to go out there for 12 years and be with who knows how many men. Now, again, it's not to say that, that but since men's market value, their sexual market value is much lower than a woman's, you know, guys have to cultivate you know, they, they, very few men are the alpha Chad thunderstroke that can go out there and just find women and hook up with them. But women have that ability because they're women. You know, again, they're, they're supposed to be the gatekeepers to the bedroom, but what happens when they throw the gates wide open? They can have anyone or anything because there's a lot of guys out there that'll just say, nah, I don't care. I don't, I don't know anything about you. I don't care. It's just, it's a quickie. Like, I'm good with that. Um, she says, uh, uh, Piazza herself, uh, who's okay. That's the, that's the podcast host. Who cares? Uh, they say about two years ago, she learned that a friend of hers, the podcast host was cheating her, on her spouse. Then she learned of another and another Piazza was shocked and intrigued. I was seeing so many more women. I know have affairs and a lot of women I didn't expect Piazza told, uh, Piazza told the post. She spent a year interviewing some two dozen women of different ages and backgrounds from all over the country about their extramarital affairs. From a young gymnastics coach who fell in love with her husband's best friend to an accomplished 60-something who had been happily cheating on her husband with multiple partners for 30 years. The podcast tells their stories with additional insights from experts like Susan uh, Shapiro Barash, whose book about women's affairs, uh, A Passion for More, inspired the podcast. At first, I went into it with my own judgment. Piazza admitted, I'm married. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's the worst thing you can do. But she learned that women had all sorts of complex reasons for seeking uh, bedroom fun outside of the marriage and that, it, and that doing so did not ruin their lives. Well, of course it didn't ruin their lives because they were hiding it, because they weren't telling their husbands because they weren't admitting to the, all the debauchery and everything else they were doing. Nikki says she has become more confident, more self-assured, and more relaxed since signing up for hookup site Ashley Madison and embarking on her first affair more than a decade ago, again, after being only married for three years. Before, she would beg her husband to do various things to her, and he would uh, ignore her requests. So because she wanted to kind of do some things that maybe he was uncomfortable with, 
That gave her free license to go outside the marriage, you see. It's not that she maybe uh, watched videos or, or tried to instruct the husband. It's not that she worked on him or had a conversation about it or, or broke things down a little bit more. Nope, out she goes. She says now she's less resentful and less spiteful because she's being selfish, of course. I don't have a lot of tension built up in my chest or stress or anxiety or any kind of that negative cloud that grows within you when you go without for so long and you start looking at this person like, why can't you understand? Why can't you give me these things? Why are we stuck in this marriage when I deserve to be happy? I deserve to feel good, Nikki confesses. Having that room to breathe just makes you less bitchy for a lack of a better word. Okay, so so what about what about the guy? You know, maybe he only gets the blowy on his birthday or Christmas. But he used to before they got married. He used to get it a lot more. And what if he says, why don't you do this anymore? And she just, I don't really feel like it. Well, that's it. License to cheat. License to go out and do whatever he wants with whoever he wants because he felt like he wasn't getting what he deserved. Do you think they'd be writing a positive glowing article about it? Do you think they'd be doing a podcast about it? Or would they be, be writing up an article about how this awful selfish man couldn't control his desire enough to stay home and be a good man and take care of the family? We, we know this is a one-way street. And again, as more women hear these podcasts and even the interviewer here is like, wow, I, I guess I look at this in a different light now. Well, of course you do. But all of this is on the sly. It's all, it's all based on a lie. That's the part, and, that, and that's why men get so concerned when there's lies, when there's cheating, when there's questions, when there's things that go unanswered because the little thing can lead to a big thing. Um, they say, while every woman has different reasons for cheating, many of the podcast subjects share similar traits. Often they meet their spouses and married when they were very young, late teens and early 20s. So you guys out there that are maybe trad cons and say, oh man, I, I want a woman that's got the V card, you know, no diamond, no hymen. I, I, you gotta, well, that's, that's no good. That's no good, obviously. And then what happens when she gains more of a count? What happens when she's, what happens when she's been out there for a little while? I got two dogs playing next to me here. So um, they say uh, for several, uh, sex with their partner happened often less after having children and they felt a lack of confidence or attractiveness as a result. But is this because they didn't make themselves unavailable? They made, didn't make themselves available because they felt like they didn't want to be with a husband. See, they never tell you why. They just say, "Ah, it wasn't happening." So here I go. Uh, one only. Um, they say many felt that they could no longer communicate with their husbands, especially about their desires. Did they try? Did they try? That's my question. Because a lot of times it's like, well, I just didn't. Nah, screw it. Only one woman interviewed the former gymnastics coach, uh, coach Katie strayed because she fell in love with someone else and was essentially run out of town when their mutual acquaintances found out. Good, she should have been, because a guy certainly would have been. In fact, most of the women Piazza interviews say they love their husbands and have no intentions of leaving them. They just want a little variety. Okay, so if men want a little variety, that's on the table now, that's okay too, and they don't have to tell their wives? I don't think so. We know how this goes. One way street. Uh, the weird thing about monogamy is that it's like saying red is your favorite color and then you have to wear red and only red, red for the rest of your days, says Monique, who's been married for 30 years. What if I wake up and feel like wearing yellow? Does that mean that red isn't my favorite color anymore? No, of course not. So it's, I want my husband, but I also want to date and I also want affairs and I also want to cheat and I also want to sleep around, but I want my husband too. It's the, I, I want all the bad boys out there, but I also want the good guy that's gonna, you know, think I'm his one and only and work really hard and provide for me and the family. It's selfishness. And how much of this selfishness do we see in the dating market today? In, in everything today, everybody's selfish about everything. They say uh, she ended up meeting a younger man and seeing uh, him on and off for 12 years. The affair was fun, it was enriching, but she would never call it romantic. So she had no feelings. It was literally just a bang. And this is from a mid 50 year old woman. So it's not just the younger generation that's going out there and getting crazy. 
I bet if you asked him what are uh, her children's names, he wouldn't know, Monique says, of her first fling. So again, it has nothing to do who she is with a person. That guy just used her as a bag of meat, and she was fine with it. Since then, she's experimented with a lot of other things that I can't say because I'm going to try to get this on YouTube. But there were multiple people involved in different things. <laughs> For Monique, sleeping with other people is about having a broad experience of life. But what would the woman say if, if the man and the husband did the same thing and then decided to take his finances and resources away and give it to a different woman because he fell in love with her? See, men has the resources. Women have the sexuality and the feminine virtues and all the other things. But when a woman gives away herself to another man, that's really, in essence, the same as a man saying, I'm not going to give you my money. I'm going to give it to some strange woman that you don't know, but I want to, or taking part of his money and giving it away. You know, we, we value partners for different things many times in a relationship, but guys are often, are, are often wanted for their ability to support. What happens if he decides to leave? Well, women can sue for support. Can a man sue for access to her after she cheats and leaves? Or he leaves? No, of course not. So it's always the one-way street. Again, the National Opinion Research Center's general uh, social survey found that American wives were 40% more likely to cheat on their spouses in 2010 than 1990, while the percentage of husbands who cheated stayed the same. But are women really cheating more? Or are they just finally talking about it? So it's, it's leaped 40% between 1990 and 2010. Have things changed between 2010 and 2020, or are they getting even worse? I'd say they're accelerating exponentially. Piazza told the Post that she really does think more women are having affairs compared to 30 or 40 years ago, largely because of privilege. There are so many women, or there are so many more women in the workforce and making their own money, the host explained. When you're less financially dependent on your husband, you're less afraid of possibly losing your husband or ruining your marriage. You're more willing to take chances uh, to take the risks. She also noted that technology has made it, uh, conducting an affair much easier. Now women can search for one night stands on their phone. Right, so again, now a woman can provide what she used to need a man for, which is money. So there's the risk of, of losing his income and who he is as a person is diminished. So she feels like it's free range to go out and, and do what she wants to do. Now, women will call this empowerment. Okay, but we see what happens when women get the empowerment, when they get the ability to do whatever they want. They act like grown-up children and just be selfish. And it's not to say that guys aren't selfish too, but guys don't have the same ability to do this. I'm sure if they did, they, there's a lot of guys that would go buck wild, but they don't, but women do. And that's the difference. Again, uh, they say about the, uh, about the apps and all this stuff, they say your spouse may be lying in bed next to you and you can be looking for someone to have an affair with on your phone. The ease of it is making people or more people do it. Some women on the podcast use burner phones to communicate with their lovers. Others use WhatsApp and delete it every night before downloading it again in the morning. So you guys out there that say, oh yeah, but you know what? I, she's given me permission to check her phone. It's not that she's deleting messages. She deletes the app entirely. Now, what's interesting is in many apps, it'll save the data, but the app is gone. So you have no way to easily access that data. So if you grab her phone and you look through the text messages and you look through emails, there's nothing there. And there's no WhatsApp or any strange apps on there. But the next day she downloads it and once she puts in her phone number or email or whatever it is that they use for this stuff, a lot of times it'll upload previous conversations or maybe she doesn't need the previous conversations because the contacts are all saved in WhatsApp or in the data. Now, I don't go dating a lot of or deleting a lot of apps, but a lot of times when you do remove an app from a phone or your computer, it says, do you want to remove the associated data? And if you say no, the next time you install it, it uses the same folder or the same location to save the data. It'll recall it right into the system. A burner phone she has, and she can throw it under the seat of her car. Just never take it in the house. Puts it on silent. It sits under the driver's seat or something or other. Even if you borrowed her car, how many times do you stick your hands under the front seat of the car? There's no, see, this is what I say, no matter how much you try to lock things down, if she wants to cheat, 
or he or whoever, if they want to cheat, they're going to cheat. And so the only thing you can do to really gauge their, I don't know, willingness or desire to do it is who they are as a person. And let's face it, people are not very good people today. Women, especially recently. All I have to do is look in the dating app profiles of the day that I do uh, on locals. Uh, they say um, others only meet men who live outside of a 100 mile radius or only hook up when out of town for work. One woman Piazza interviewed was caught when her husband looked at her phone. They ended up getting a divorce. Well, of course they did. All these guys in this situation. Can you imagine being the husband and be like, you've been cheating on me with multiple dudes for how many years? 12 of our 15 years of marriage? You'd want to know if the kids are yours. I know I certainly would. So of course they'd be getting divorced because the trust is gone. Uh, Monique actually thinks her husband knows about her dalliances and that he's fine with it. Oh, have you talked to him about it? Have you mentioned it? No, because she says she thinks her husband knows and that he's fine with it. She just made a story up in her head. I think he knows about it and I think he's okay with it. Okay, have you had the conversation? Have you told him about it? I bet you'd find out the truth real quick if he was okay about it, but of course she doesn't. She just rationalizes it. He knows, he's gotta know. I mean, it's so obvious. He's gotta know and he must be fine with it because he hasn't said anything. But as a guy that's been on the receiving end of somebody that where you weren't even, your brain didn't even wander down that path, have the conversation then if you're so uh, sure about it. Uh, she says, imagine the scenario, she says in episode three, if your wife had a lover, but at the same time, that made her sexier. Like uh, she would buy lingerie or, or try things that she never tried before, knowing uh, you define an increase in hotness. Wouldn't you want that? Again, making up a story in her head. Just imagine how your wife has a lover, how hot that is that some other guy desires her and, and she's buying little outfits and stuff. Wouldn't you want that for her? Wouldn't, don't you find that attractive? No, that's how women think. Women find it attractive when a hundred other women want their man and she says, he's mine. And all these other women want him, but they can't have him because he's mine. Women like that. Now, how would she feel if he started giving himself away to the hundred other women? I bet that would change real quick. Men, I mean, yes, men have trophy wives and all the guys are like, hey man, looking good. Yeah, that's a very good confidence builder for, for a man. But what happens when he finds out those hundred other men are, are sniffing around and maybe trying to hook up with her or maybe trying to hang out with her or maybe trying to contact her? They're not so happy about that. It's a completely different world. But again, these women, they will create a story or a scenario or an instance in their head where they say, oh, he, know, he knows what's going on. He must be okay with this. No problems. Oh, he must know. And they justify it. And what's the title of this? More women are cheating. What are the comments? Uh, I don't even know if there's comments on here. But what if it was a man doing that? What, what if it was men in general? It would be men or pigs. Men are disrespecting women more and more. Men are throwing away their families and their wives for illicit, quick love affairs that are meaningless. These men are pigs. You know that's what would happen. You know it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not saying that all women fall into this category. You could even say this is probably isn't the majority of, of women. But what are the risks? What are the odds? What are the chances something like this will happen to you? And what's your threshold for the risk. And if you do say, you know something, I do want to date. I do want to have a girlfriend, maybe even get married and have kids. How willing are you to commit emotionally? How willing are, how much are you willing to give to this relationship when you know this may be ha happening or she may be cheating on you or she may leave you or you may find out the kids aren't yours? Isn't that what would make men quote unquote toxic and awful human beings when they don't emotionally connect and attach to anybody? And they just say, you know something, I'm like, I'm glad we're dating and I'm glad you're in my life and everything, but eh, I'm prepared for you to step out on me at any point in time. And if I find out my response would be, yeah, I figured. 
Is that really what women want from men? Because that's what they're going to get from men. That men will take their money. They won't invest in a future. They won't save up for a home or for a family. They'll spend it on the things they want. They'll just be selfish. They'll just plan for their own futures. And then if a woman happens to meet them and become part of their life and they start dating, the guy's not going to want to get married. He's not going to want to have kids because he says, odds of this going long term. And you have a job. You have your own money. Why would I commit to you? Women dictate what type of relationships men have. If a man finds a woman that is worthy, he'll marry her. He'll have a family with her, but he's got to trust her. He's got to truly believe that she's not going to have some other dude's kid or she's not going to bounce and take half his resources. And even if a man does trust her, how long is that trust good for? Things change awful quick today. Can you imagine, I mean, the woman that's been with her guy like 15, almost 20 years, you're going back to 20, I mean, we're going back to almost the 2000s. What about the woman that's in her 50s that have been, has been cheating for 30 years? That means she was born back in 1970s. Do you think the man that has been com maybe committed to her, I mean, she hasn't told him that she's doing this, so odds are she didn't find out he was doing it if he is doing it. But the, the difference is I think that Again, since men are primarily looked at for protection and resources and money and as, a, as a, an opportunity for women, where, where women aren't looked at as the same, if that guy did cheat, but he was still a good father and he supported the family and he gave her what she wanted most, which is financing and protection and, and the children being raised well and, and enough money to live a good, comfortable life, what did she lose out on? It's a lot different than what men lose out on when women cheat. You know, a lot of people don't believe that, that there's a difference. There's a, a large difference. You know, both, both people bring different things to the table. Just women, women aren't bringing in anything anymore. They're not, they're not bringing in anything at least men want. So men, men don't commit. Men just say, eh, that's it, I'm out. Um, oh, and, and let me just... I'll, I, I know I've been ranting here, but this is a story that's been actually the picture of this has been circulating around on, on Twitter as well. I left my husband because the bedroom fun was boring and now I have the same problem with my new partner. Always new, always new, need the butterflies, need the tingles, need the excitement, need something new. Okay, now I got a new guy and now I'm bored of him. And again and again and again, it's over and over just like the woman in the relationship here who had four dudes in one day. It's just selfish. It's just, this is what happens when you, you lose the ability to pair bond. You have too many partners, you get away with it, you get addicted to the excitement and the, the energy and the tingles of the, it's just over. Uh, guys, if you're here on uh, Rumble or YouTube, make sure to join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com today. I, I got another little bit more I'm gonna show. Um, and for those of you on Rumble uh, or either place, YouTube or Rumble, I upload everything to YouTube. If YouTube accepts it, it gets passed on to Rumble. That can take 12 hours sometimes. Um, if YouTube doesn't take it, I uploaded it straight to Rumble and it takes about an hour to process and then it's ready. Yes, things show up a little bit later on Rumble in the ecosystem, but it's still there. And once you get on Rumble and you're using it every day, what you'll find is that every day you'll get new stuff. It'll just be slightly delayed from YouTube, but the difference is you don't, you're not giving YouTube the clicks, the views, the, you know, the, the revenue resources, things like that. So be mindful of that. All right, um, I got a little bit more to talk about over on Locals. Make sure to join us over on betterbachelor.locals.com today if you'd like to see that stuff. Mm -hmm.